I will show you why the Nissan LEAF is the best value in the electric car segment today. I know you're already going into the comments to write what an idiot I am and how Tesla destroys the LEAF, and I get that, but give me a chance to explain. We all know that the Nissan LEAF is no longer the top vehicle in its category. There are EVs that get better range like the Hyundai Kona Electric or the Tesla Model 3. However, the Nissan LEAF is seriously underrated and I'll tell you why. I'll go into the basics, price, size, pros and cons, reliability, depreciation or resale value and give you a reason why I think the LEAF is a great buy. Basics Nissan LEAF is a compact hatchback electric vehicle. It has seating for five passengers. Since its introduction in 2010, the LEAF has sold over 500,000 vehicles. It sold the most units in Europe, followed by US, and then Japan. The current generation LEAF was introduced in 2017 as a 2018 model. The LEAF comes in two battery sizes. The 40 kilowatt hour model comes with a 110 kilowatt electric motor producing 147 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. The 62 kilowatt hour model comes with a 160 kilowatt motor with 214 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. The Leaf is front-wheel drive and the transmission is a single-speed reduction gear. The EPA range is 149 miles for the 40 kilowatt hour model and 215 to 226 miles for the 60 kilowatt hour model, depending on the trip. The S Plus gets 226 miles, while the SV Plus and the SL Plus gets 215 miles of range. Nissan doesn't recommend towing with the Leaf. Price The smaller battery Leaf starts at $31,600, and the larger battery one starts at $38,200 and can go up to 43900 I will talk about pricing a little later in the video because these are not real life prices that you'll pay. Exterior styling When Nissan redesigned the Leaf in 2017, I think they made it more attractive. It's not quite as funky looking as the original Leaf. The front has Nissan's V-Motion grille which makes it easily identifiable as a Nissan. It doesn't have the space pod bug eye look of the first generation. When looking at the side profile, Nissan kept the profile similar to the original. The floating roof design looks good and makes it look a bit lower in profile. The back is again more restrained than the original and it's more conventional looking. The Leaf is no Nissan Aria, which looks gorgeous, but it's functional. Interior The Leaf's interior has a familiar look of a Nissan product. It's more conventional with lots of physical controls, which in my book is a plus. It's nice to be able to raise the temperature in the cabin by feeling the buttons without having to go through a touch screen. The interior won't win any styling awards, but if you care about the ease of use, then the Leaf's conventional controls will be appealing to those who value function over style. Size. The Leaf is 176.4 inches long. The Hyundai Kona EV is 12 inches shorter at 164 inches. The Leaf is a compact and the Kona is a subcompact. The Leaf has a lot of room inside. It's got 41 inches of front headroom and 37.3 inches of rear headroom, which is pretty good. There's a good amount of legroom in the rear measuring 33.5 inches. The cargo volume behind the rear seat is 23.6 cubic feet. That's pretty generous compared to the Tesla Model 3's 15 cubic feet and the Kona EV's 19.2 cubic feet. Pros Nissan's been making the Leaf since 2010 and have sold 500,000 units of these electric vehicles. Nissan's experience in building EVs shouldn't be ignored. Another pro for the Nissan Leaf is the choice of two battery sizes so that you can choose the range and budget that's appropriate for your needs. Third, Nissan's ProPilot Active Safety Driver's Assistance is considered one of the best in the industry. The semi-autonomous driving experience includes assisted steering, braking, and acceleration during single-lane highway driving. 
the Leaf is available with a heat pump system that maximizes battery life in colder climates when you run the heater. The real life pricing is what makes the Leaf an excellent buy. You can buy a brand new Lisan Leaf for 8,000 to 12,000 off MSRP. You won't have to work very hard to find a deal like this. These deals are common across the country. I went on True Car and Auto Trader, and you can see these numbers. So no one is paying MSRP for the Leaf. And these numbers don't include the federal tax credit that you'll get with the Leaf of $7,500 if you have enough taxable income. If you qualify for the tax credit, your net cost on a smaller battery Leaf could be in the range of $19,000 and the larger battery Leaf $22,500. If you were to get a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus at $37,990, that's the price you pay, and there's no deal to be had. There's no more federal tax credit for the Tesla. Looking at the Hyundai Kona Electric, it's a little bit better, but you're still talking about paying near MSRP and just getting the $7,500 in tax credit to make it starting at approximately $30,000. So if you're paying 40000 I wouldn't say LEAF would be a better choice between it and the Model 3. But for $17,000 less, I would argue that the LEAF is a better value. The Kona does give you about 30 miles more range than the LEAF Plus. But again, it's a smaller vehicle class and costs $7,500 more than the LEAF in real life. Cons. The 0 60 miles per hour it's good for a compact hatchback, but not in the same league as the Tesla Model 3. The smaller battery Leaf will go from 0 to 60 around 8 seconds, and the larger battery one will do the same in 7 seconds. The Kona EV will do the 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, and the Model 3 Standard Range Plus it's 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Don't feel like the Leaf is slow. The Nissan LEAF will easily beat Volkswagen Golf's 1.4 liter engine and the Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid to 60 miles per hour. The second weakness of the LEAF is the DC fast charging, which is limited to 100 kilowatts. The Tesla Model 3 is capable of charging at 250 kilowatts. This is an issue if you want to use the LEAF as a travel vehicle. It will take 45 minutes to get from 0 to 80% charge with a 100 kilowatt fast charger. Only other issue I have is that Nissan uses an air-cooled battery pack rather than a liquid-cooled one. The first two years of the original LEAF had some battery degradation issues. All LEAFs from 2015 and beyond have an improved heat-resistant battery pack. The degradation issue does not seem to be a problem in all the 2015 and beyond batteries, but just be aware that in theory, a liquid cold battery pack would provide better thermal management under high heat conditions and may provide a better battery life. Nissan provides a 8 year, 100,000 mile battery warranty, including against capacity loss below 9 bars. The battery starts with 12 bars. Nissan is going to go with a liquid cooled battery pack in the upcoming ARIA. Reliability. According to Consumer Reports, the 2020 LEAF is expected to have average reliability. For your information, the LEAF has had much better than average overall reliability for five of the last six years. With electric cars, they should be simpler to maintain since there is no gasoline engine to service. Depreciation and resale value. This is an area where the great deal you got off of the MSRP can hurt you. The three-year expected resale value of the Nissan LEAF is 44.5% of the original price. The five-year expected resale value is 38.1% of its MSRP. The seven-year expected resale value is 27.4% of MSRP. These numbers are below industry average by about 20%. But remember, you didn't pay sticker price when you bought it. You can make the case that if you paid a net $22,500 for the LEAF SV Plus, which sticker is for 40000 
then it's worth 15200 in five years, then it doesn't seem so bad, does it? Conclusion Based off of just the listed price, the Nissan Leaf is competitive, but no longer the segment leader that it once dominated. Once you consider the real-world pricing and the fact that the Leaf is a good EV overall, I think it's worthy of your consideration if you want to buy an electric or want a vehicle that outperforms most gasoline engine compact hatchbacks in performance. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.